visitors from another world have provided sci-fi creature designers an opportunity to build some of the most iconic and memorable beasts to be seen on film. Debate on aliens and the many different theories that lay behind these interplanetary visitors rages on. Those that say they visit us from distant galaxies and those that say they have been here since the start of our civilization and others who claim it all to be fiction. If they are real, who or what are they? In this first part of a double episode video we will take a look at these aliens and ask which are the good, the bad and the ugly. Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. It is claimed that there are three main groups of ET visiting this planet of ours, but these groups are just a drop in the bucket of the 200 plus species that are said to regularly visit this little blue marble. There is a constant exchange of alien species happening each and every day, some passing through, others here for the long run. As in the movie Men in Black, surely there should be an agency monitoring these aliens. After all, if we track the movements of our own species on this planet, we should at least do the same with them. Nancy Malakera, a ufologist, believes that there are 218 alien races routinely arriving and departing our planet. These extraterrestrial races are said to be living within our galaxy. Does this mean we are just a holiday hotspot for ET? Or is there something more sinister afoot? Let's take a look at these aliens and find the good, the bad and the ugly. Let's start on a positive note with the good, the Andromedans. This alien comes in three different classifications. Firstly, there are the Andromedans that can communicate telepathically. Another is from a race of fourth or fifth dimensional humans that have similar features to our own. Others may even have cone heads, elongated skulls like those found in Peru and other countries. Some are said to be three to four feet in height with blue skin. They have a humanoid form with bold round heads and dark eyes. The final group is the master cast, standing at at least seven to nine feet in height. These winged humanoids are said to be existing in a higher dimension. Could they be an explanation for angels? Another group which some would say are angelic and look out for humanity are the Nordics. These humanoid extraterrestrials are sometimes referred to as the blondes. They have a very human-like appearance with heights comparable to our own measuring from five and a half to seven feet in height. In the majority of contactee reports the Nordics are described as having blonde hair with light eyes. Most have blue eyes however other variations have been seen such as violet, pink, red, purple and green. They are also said to be examples of physical perfection and are extremely attractive to humans. Nordics can easily pass for human when seen from a little bit of a distance. They communicate using telepathy and even possess telekinetic powers. The origin of the Nordics is the Pleiades star cluster at a distance of 400 light years from this planet. History tells how initially Billy Meir of Switzerland made first contact with this race, this happening in the 1940s. Billy would telepathically communicate with a female Pleiadin named Sam Jesse. This information exchange continued for a decade during the 1970s and the early 1980s. Their home planet is named Era and is in a different dimension than ours. They are an extremely ancient race, first discovering the earth around 225,000 BC. So what is the Nordic agenda? They are watchers of earth. They seek to enlighten humanity by providing spiritual revelation and warn humanity when our behavior threatens the world and could potentially lead to catastrophe. They also warn of evil entities that inhabit the galaxy monitoring the actions of the grey aliens and reptilians. 
Many say that the ideas that are found in the New Age movement were given by the Nordics. The Nordics have our backs so what could be the problem with the greys? Now it's time for the bad. The grey aliens are typically described as very thin with large out of proportion heads their height being around 3.5 to 6 feet tall. They are probably the best known of all alien types. Their image has been turned into keychains, featured on t-shirts and is now a pop culture icon. This image is somewhat accurate with Hollywood and science fiction TV shows doing a very good job of portraying the Grey's appearance. The large bulbous forehead with its unblinking bulging eyes. The pale grey wrinkly skin all true to life according to those that have claimed to have encountered this alien species. More detailed descriptions say that the skin of the greys has a texture similar to that of an ocean mammal. They seem to have no ears with no protrusions or indentations seen on the side of the heads. Some have described them with three or four webbed fingers and webbed feet. Once again communication is through telepathy. This is often shown in alien encounter stories. They indicate that people can hear them speaking directly in their mind. No sound coming from the alien's mouth. The greys are said to originate from Zeta Reticuli. Betty Hill reported her encounter with greys in probably the most famous abduction case in history. She drew a map to these star system when recounting her ordeal through hypnosis. Majory Fish, UFO researcher, has hypothesized that the Greys home base is a pair of stars some 220 trillion miles in distance from our planet. Greys can be known as Zeta Reticulans or Zeta Reticuli, this alien name alluding to their home base. So why is this group of ET running around the earth? What's the Greys agenda? Abduct D reports that the Grey seem to be carrying out scientific research. The Grey is observing and studying all forms of life found in the universe. Treating humans in the same way we do, wild animals, with a catch, tag and release program. They perform their tests and evaluations, then set their human guinea pigs free. A theory has been postulated that the Grey alien race is a dying species. This is because they are a cloned race created and genetically engineered by the aliens known as the reptilians. The greys were a slave race serving their reptilian masters until they rebelled and set themselves free. They now are in search of a planet to call their own and some say they have their unblinking black eyes focused firmly on the earth. The conspiracy exists that the claims that the greys were the species of alien found at Roswell, New Mexico at the now infamous UFO crash. They were the first ET species to make an agreement with the US government offering advanced technology in exchange for experimentation on human subjects. Their goal through genetic engineering and cross species genetic merging to prevent the extinction of their race. The Nordics have warned humanity that trusting these grey aliens is a mistake and they are a threat to our world. These two species have been battling each other with us in the middle for eons. Which of these species do you think is telling the truth? Would earth be better off with no alien visitors? Are you looking forward to the day when like any good sci-fi movie our daily lives are interlaced with aliens? Let me know in the comments below and please don't forget if you want to see part 2 hit that bell to receive notifications of our latest videos. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time.